right. Look at that. So this is this is a Buick Spark car. In the early days of the program, we didn't have air. This is an air starter, by the way. This is what we ended up using in the latter days of the program. Bolt one of these up to the gearbox. There's a little panel that opens up on the bottom of the cell, and it exposes the mate to this drive gear. You snap that starter in place. You hook up two hot air carts to it, and you can generate enough spinning force, enough torque, to be able to start the engine. The engine needs the equivalent of about 600 horsepower to get spun up to 3,000 RPM, at which point it uh, will start on its own. That's but f firing off the, I forget the, the fuel. Tab. Okay, the tab. Adding okay. the fuel and then adding the tab. So you got to have airflow and compression before yeah, you Yeah, but that's all happening as a real the, the engine spinning. spinning due to this mechanical assist. And that made some sort of gear that was in the front of the Yeah, that's on the bottom of the engine. Yeah. It's on the bottom of the engine. Now, in the early days, we didn't have air starters that were this powerful or able to handle that much uh, power being thrown into the turbine. And so we came up with the idea of using uh, a V8. The original thought was, well, we'll just take a V8 engine and throw a right angle gearbox on the back of it and we'll <laughs> use that. Well, it turned out that uh, none of the V8s available at that point were strong enough. So we're talking in the 61, 62 time frame when this thing got invented, and uh, uh, we ended up having two engines because we needed about 600 horsepower. Mm -hmm. Reliably. So, reliable. And the Buick was pretty reliable. Yeah. Now, there were other V8s around that were uh, uh, much more much more horsepower, yeah. but they were not reliable. Yeah. Corvette being a good example. Yeah, sure. So we end up with these two 401 cubic inch V8s. They're powered, they've got uh, power glide transmissions behind them. <laughs> Seriously. It's, it's a standard power glide transmission. And then that goes back into a uh, gearbox that joins it together and then finally ends up coming upwards to this device right here. So this device, you'll see, has that same gear on the top of it that this is. This is the part that mates to the gearbox. So this thing functions just like a periscope in a submarine. It's got a little push button on the, on the side, and hydraulic fluid from this little reservoir driven off of the transmission is what drives that probe up into the bottom of the gearbox. On the top of this thing are three little micro switches that illuminate three green lights on the control panel. Back, so when those three green lights are illuminated, the operator now has permission to crank the throttle. The throttle on this thing, there's a single throttle. It's a Morse boat control throttle. We scavenged yeah. it off of somebody's cabin cruise. <laughs> and that same throttle is attached to both of these four barrel carburetors. You'll notice also that the exhaust pipes on this thing are very short. That's it. <laughs> From here to here. No muffler, no nothing. No muffler, nothing. Nah, we don't need any of that crap. So when, when the Buicks, when the, when the throttle was pushed, this cart sounds like a double A fuel dragster. It is the sweetest sound ever. <laughs> and of course, Until the motor kick, the engine kicks up, on, right? That ended up being the death of most of, most of the Buick, Sark, Buick uh, engines. Because the operator, that you know, the young airman on the ground who's starting this uh, big old turbojet, he he get fascinated even through his earmuffs with the sound of these two Buick V8s cranking up. He wouldn't drop out when the when the Buicks hit 4,500 RPM. He'd take it up higher, and of course, the, the weak point on the Buick nailhead is the uh, crankshaft bearings, and we'd blow the bottom out of those <laughs> V8s. 